Before the Dream SMP were the biggest Minecraft celebrities on the block, get it, like Minecraft block, there was the Yogscast. The Yogscast garnered millions and millions of fans with their Minecraft gameplay videos back in the early 2010s, becoming the biggest channel in the UK at the time and some of the biggest YouTube stars in the world. With this newfound fame and success, the Yogscast decided to go beyond Minecraft and set their sights on a far more ambitious goal, creating their own video game. Thus Yog Ventures was born, a multiplayer open world sandbox crafting game in the same vein as Minecraft but with highly detailed graphics, stunning worlds and more complex crafting mechanics. However, this ambitious idea would end up snowballing into a half a million dollar Kickstarter disaster which tarnished the creator's name, scammed backers out of hundreds of thousands of dollars, and ruined the studio that helped develop it. How did things go so wrong and why? Today let's take a look at the infamous Kickstarter disaster, Yog Ventures. Before we get into the video, I just want to give a huge thank you to Raycon for sponsoring this video. Raycon make wireless earbuds that look, feel, and sound amazing. They come in these super cool cases and you can get these in multiple different colors like rose gold and red. I got these really cool electric blue ones. The earbuds charge right in the case and they have 32 hours of battery life and 8 hours of playtime, which is honestly really good. But they don't just look good, they sound incredible. Raycons have optimized gel tips so they fit perfectly in your ear and they even come with tons of extra gel tips so you can find your perfect fit. Seriously guys, these things do not budge so you can take them on your walks, running, exercising, biking, all that kind of stuff and you won't need to worry about them falling out. You can also just use them while working or watching TV at home. Raycons are so comfy and discreet that they're perfect for pretty much any occasion. Plus, Raycons have three different sound profiles so you can switch between pure, balanced, and bass sound for the perfect listen. Raycon's everyday earbuds have over 49,000 five-star reviews, they're durable and water resistant, and they come at half the price of other premium audio brands. So if you're looking for comfortable, high quality sound, click the link in the description below or go to buyraycon.com slash izzy to get 15% off your Raycon purchase. You'll get some super amazing earbuds and you'll be helping to support the channel. Thank you so much to Raycon for sponsoring this video, they're awesome, definitely go check them out. And now let's get into the disaster that was Yog Ventures. Founded in July of 2008 by friends Lewis Brindley and Simon Lane, who went by Zephos and Honeydew respectively, Yogscast was a staple of 2010's YouTube. The pair made a name for themselves with their gaming videos during a time where gaming was still emerging as a genre on the platform. They started out making modestly successful World of Warcraft guide videos, but after launching their Minecraft roleplay series, Shadow of Israfel, they were catapulted in popularity, their channel rapidly growing and expanding. This was mainly thanks to the huge surge in popularity that Minecraft videos were seeing around this time. After the hit success of their Minecraft series, the Yogscast channel became solely dedicated to Minecraft content and more members were added to the Yogscast group, each with their own Yogscast branded channel. At this point, it had pretty much become its own network. However, the main channel, Yogscast Lewis and Simon, remained the most popular and they had essentially created their own Minecraft empire. By 2011, the main channel hit 1 million subscribers, making it the biggest channel in the UK at the time and the Yogscast crew were bona fide online celebrities. With a rapidly growing army of fans, merchandise and video revenue rolling in, and appearances at big conventions, it looked like things could only go up for the Yogscast. But on the topic of conventions, they hit a bit of a stumbling block in 2011 with their appearance at Minecon, the annual Minecraft convention. Following a panel that they ran showcasing work by the Minecraft community, the creator of the game, Notch, began tweeting about the group and their behaviour, quote, I'm very sorry about the behaviour of the people that we won't work with anymore. Celebrity or not, you don't f-bomb kids. Yogscast Yogscast repeatedly insulted people, talked behind their backs, refused to cooperate, and acted like total spoiled divas non-stop. They called us a bunch of nerds who don't know how to run a company, demanded that we pay them to come here, nobody else got paid. Many who attended the convention questioned these accusations though, and after Yogscast put out a response video where they expressed their disappointment at the organization of the event and professed their respect for Notch and his game, the creator apologized. He blamed the debacle on stress and miscommunication, though after this event, the Yogscast would never work with Notch again. And I bring this up not just because it's juicy drama from a Minecraft convention over 10 years ago, though let's be honest that is one of the reasons it's pretty funny, but because this scuffle between the Yogscast and Notch was potentially one of the biggest factors that led them to create their own video game. For several years they'd been building their entire brand on Minecraft and getting into such a heated public argument with the creator may have left them feeling like their jobs and even their brand were in jeopardy. And this was around the time that game studio Wintercool Games approached the Yogscast with the idea of making their own game. Right, activate TNT. 
Pew, 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 pew. <laughs> oh, yeah. This, this is the solution to all of our problems, Lewis. Right here. Wow. I've always wanted a video game. It's my own game. It's all about me. It's all about being a dwarf. You dig holes, you blow shit up. It's gonna be fucking amazing. In your face, Notch. In your face. <laughs> On April 7, 2012, a project was launched on the crowdfunding platform Kickstarter. Yog Ventures, a Yogscast video game launched by a company called Wintercool Games LLC. Yog Ventures is going to be an open world sandbox game designed first and foremost as a multiplayer experience. The game will allow you to create and shape worlds, then easily share them and play with friends. You'll have control over everything from the buildings and dungeons to the NPCs and mobs. Yog Ventures will be the ultimate modders game where even the rules of winning and losing can be tweaked. Think adventure maps in Minecraft, only now you aren't limited to just blocks. The game utilizes technology called marching cubes, which allows us to generate fantastic new world terrain that is random and editable. Essentially, Yog Ventures was an open world sandbox crafting sim heavily inspired by Minecraft. Utilizing the same sort of explore, build, and destroy mechanics, the game's graphics were much higher quality, using detailed 3D terrain instead of blocks and highly detailed character models and animations. Concept art showed grand sweeping worlds, beautiful fantasy biomes, and highly detailed characters and maps promising a truly unique and visually impressive sandbox experience. The game of course would be heavily themed around the Yogs cast themselves, with playable characters from their YouTube video series as well as in-jokes and references for Yogs cast fans. And this really worked in their favour. They cleverly catered to not only gaming and Minecraft fans in general, but Yogs cast fans promising several brand new series on their channel where they would use maps made by the players. From the Kickstarter quote, and of course this means we'll be launching an even more epic and amazing video series to run alongside the release of Yogg Ventures, potentially even featuring maps that you have made. All of the maps and adventures we make for this will be released to the community so you can play along with us or reimagine the adventure and make it your own. Yogg's cast and Wintercool were asking for $250,000 to develop the game. They already had a very early and rough prototype which they showed off in their Kickstarter video but they needed a lot more funding to get the game to a playable state. And speaking of Winter Cool Games, we should probably take a look at who exactly they are because they play a pretty big role in this entire debacle. As explained on the Kickstarter, Lewis and Simon weren't artists or coders so they brought on Winter Cool Games, described as a team of indie developers based in and around Hollywood, California. With many of these artists working for big companies like DreamWorks and having years of experience in the industry, it seemed like Winter Cool was the perfect fit to bring Yogg Ventures to life. There were a few early signs that something wasn't quite right though. According to the Kickstarter, Wintercool had never actually produced a game before and Yogg Ventures would be their first title. Additionally, despite the estimated delivery date of the game's beta release being December 2012, which gave them less than a year to get the game ready, Wintercool was only able to work part-time on Yogg Ventures. That's a very full-time looking project to be doing part-time. The early video footage and screenshots didn't bode particularly well either. This was during early development of course, but the quality was noticeably poor. Regardless, the Kickstarter and in combination with a lot of hype from the Yogg's cast crew drew in fans by the thousands and the game was fully funded in just over a week. It was listed as one of Kickstarter's official projects we love and by the end of the campaign Yogg's cast and Wintercool had 13,647 backers who pledged a whopping total of $567,665 to make Yogg Ventures. With high hopes and half a million dollars, Yogg's cast and Wintercool set out to make their ambitious game a reality. But as you probably guessed, things didn't go quite quite according to plan. As with most promising Kickstarter projects, updates were frequent in the beginning and backers were kept in the loop with information, sneak peeks and even simple thank you posts. In June of 2012, a few months after the project was fully funded, Yogg's cast took Yogg Ventures to E3. I'm sure most of you know what E3 is by this point, you know, we're all gamers here. But if you don't, it's basically a big annual video game convention event showcase and Yogg's cast got their very own decked out booth with demos set up for the public to play. It was a pretty big deal and a mark of how well known and well received Yogg Ventures was becoming even this early on into development. 
Throughout the rest of 2012, updates continued, though backers began to get nervous as the December 2012 beta launch date neared with no updates about it in sight. On Christmas Day, the pre-alpha demo of Yogg Ventures was released to backers, allowing them to download and play it. From the update post, quote, There isn't a lot finished yet as you're all about to find out. However, hopefully everyone will be able to see the potential of where this game is heading and how much fun it will be when we get all the bugs fixed and features in. That day is a long way off. This is like a 10 minute sketch of a month long painting so we fully expect there to be lots of questions and concerns. However, that's what this process is all about. It's about letting the backers see how this game comes along, warts and all. I don't want to be too harsh on the project because the devs and artists were clearly doing the best they could given the circumstances, but this pre-alpha was absolutely not up to scratch. The game was meant to be in a fully playable beta state by this point, but it looked more like an early prototype and the comments were filled with agitated and stressed backers. However, Wintercool, who were posting the majority of the updates, tried their best to answer questions and quell the outrage where they could. Updates to the pre-alpha continued through December and January followed by a month-long silence in February which was broken with the release of the alpha version at the end of March. While this news was promising and most backers were fairly forgiving of the delays, the alpha update was followed by five months of silence ruining any goodwill that the update may have garnered from backers. After this five-month wait, the Kickstarter was updated once again. Wintercool announced the date of the closed beta launch and shared some footage of the game and it was certainly something. This post shed some light on what was going on behind the scenes and it wasn't great. To paraphrase, Wintercool thought that the fully constructible and destructible voxel-based terrain was finished, but when it turned out that what they'd made was slow, buggy, and couldn't really be used to create anything interesting, they decided to scrap everything they had and build it again from scratch. This meant that since December 2012, for over eight months, Wintercool had been funding Yogg Ventures out of pocket. They blew through the entire half a million dollar budget creating this, and now had to pay to complete it themselves. Wintercool also shared that they'd taken time off from their day jobs to work solely on Yogg Ventures but this stopped being viable and now they had to work on it in their spare time during weekends, lunch breaks and free evenings. With a stressed and overworked staff team, half a million dollars down the drain, dwindling funds and a very rough unpolished looking product, things weren't looking good for Yogg Ventures. It had already been 8 months since the estimated delivery date and with backers growing impatient and agitated something needed to be done urgently. Instead they went silent for nearly an entire year. Over 10 months of total silence elapsed before backers heard anything about the project. On July 17th of 2014, an email was sent out by Yogscast Lewis finally updating backers on what on earth had been going on. According to the email, Wintercool had stopped working on the game because it was too ambitious and difficult for their small team. Lewis also wrote, quote, We appreciate that Yogg Ventures backers are our most dedicated fans and we want to ensure you get some really cool and special stuff that's just for you. We really want to treat you like members of an exclusive club with rewards coming to you for years to come. Although we're under no obligation to do anything, instead we're going to do our best to make this right and make you really glad you backed the project. As you can probably guess, a lot of people were pissed off about the whole we're under no obligation thing. While it's technically true with a lot of crowdfunding projects, most of the time there's no actual legal obligation to deliver what you promised, it's still a really terrible tone deaf thing to say. You take over $500,000 of backers money and then make them wait several years before telling them that you don't owe them anything, yeah, they're probably going to be a little bit mad. Anyway, Yogscast told backers that to make up for the failed project, instead of getting a copy of Yogg Ventures, they'd be getting a Steam key for a similar Kickstarter game called Tug. Tug, or the untitled game, was an open world RPG sandbox Minecraft clone pretty much in the same vein as Yogg Ventures. The gimmick with this project was that it was created by a team of scientists, academics, and artists with an emphasis on complex combat mechanics, natural exploration, and an immersive realistic world. You know, the things that every open world RPG Kickstarter says they'll have. Anyway, despite these lofty promises, Tug pretty much went down the same road as Yogg Ventures. Updates slowed to a crawl, the game was buggy and unfinished and looked terrible, and the company behind it, Nerd Kingdom, was plagued with layoffs, dwindling funds, and tons of internal drama. Adding insult to injury for Yogg Ventures backers who got Tug Steam Keys as a consolation prize, Tug went free to play in 2016 and since then has been abandoned. According to a Reddit post by Redactyl, they found a playlist that a Nerd Kingdom staff member accidentally leaked, indicating that they were repurposing the abandoned Tug code into a mobile game called Best Buds, though that happened in 2018 and there's been no news since then. But I'm going off on a tangent, the point is that Tug was meant to be a sort of replacement for Yogg Ventures, a Minecraft-esque open world crafting sim RPG with 
fun mechanics and beautiful graphics that backers could play in place of the failed Kickstarter. But ironically, Tug ended up being just as much of a mess, buggy, unfinished, heavily criticized and negatively reviewed before eventually becoming freeware and then abandonware. The story of Yogg Ventures doesn't end here though. Soon after Lewis's email went out, more information came to light about the game's treacherous development and what exactly went wrong. Shortly after Lewis's email went out, Chris Vale, a lead developer at Windcool, shared his side of the story via a Kickstarter post and a private forum post. Chris confirmed that the partnership between Yogscast and Windcool had dissolved and felt that his own inexperience and mistakes during the development process had caused the failure of the project. Pretty much as soon as development began, things started to go downhill. As shown in Chris's budget breakdown, several artists were given lump sums of $35,000 as payment, but after two weeks of work, one artist got a job at Lucas arts and couldn't get permission to keep working on Yogg Ventures. With nothing in their contract about what to do in this scenario, there was no way to get the $35,000 back and they had effectively wasted a large chunk of their budget on an artist who left the project early. Quote, when Lewis found out about the artist incident, he was rightly confused and upset and as a result he lost faith right away in my ability to run the company from a business standpoint and basically required that all the rest of the Kickstarter money that hadn't been spent be transferred to them right away. In the end we negotiated that $150,000 would be transferred to the Yogg's cast with the understanding that they would use that money exclusively to create and ship all the physical rewards and they would help hire a main programmer that we still didn't have on the project. However, the Yogg's cast apparently never ended up hiring anyone and with Wintercool having no money to hire anyone, Chris ended up taking over this role, working tirelessly for 18 months with essentially no pay. In fact, he ended up contributing $25,000 of his own money towards the project. The rest of the team were also stretched thin, having to work long hours in addition to their day jobs for reduced pay. Quote, I tried to cut all costs and continue the development even after the heavy losses of 2013 but the stress of trying to work full time and be full time on the game ultimately caused me to ruin my relationship with my wife. She filed for divorce because I was so obsessed with finishing this game that she couldn't take not seeing me anymore. When the divorce began I suffered a bit of a crisis personally and had to take a medical leave of absence from work. I almost lost my job too. Chris's posts were extremely apologetic and he essentially shouldered the blame for the entire fiasco, blaming his lack of experience and planning for the game's failure. Responses were mixed to say the least. A few people actually came to the defense of Wintercool blaming Yogg's cast for throwing them under the bus. This sounds a lot like this guy got hired with fairly little experience to save money compared to paying those with decades of experience and then the Yogg's were surprised that he, as part of a team of just six people, then couldn't do what 50 or more experienced game designers could do. Poor guy got his life literally ruined, I feel so sorry for him. Him. I legit feel bad for the dev. The Yogg boys not so much. I watched them around Minecraft's early years, shortly after this happening I just couldn't watch. However, the majority of backers and internet onlookers didn't take these posts too well and essentially accused Chris and Windcool of being scammers and thieves. This just sounds like someone who bit off more than he could chew because, you know, money. He should have known that a project like this is a very complex and involved process, not something you can do as a freaking part-time job besides your day job. Half a fucking million dollars, that's hire whoever you need money. You've got to be shitting me. In short, this project was a fucking clusterfuck. How the fuck do you spend 567k and have so little to show for it? Why did you not hand this off to a more experienced team? How the hell do you say we needed more money when you got double what you scoped in the first place. In the end, despite sinking hundreds of thousands of dollars plus tons of the team's own money into the project, Yogg Ventures was discontinued. The rights to the game and all of the material made for it were handed back to the Yogg's cast which backers hoped would lead to another studio picking it up but it's been 10 years and there's no sign of it ever making a comeback so I think we can probably give up on that dream. Wintercool Games shut down shortly after all of this went down with all of the artists going their separate ways and hopefully moving on to greener pastures. Chris actually started Wintercool back back up in 2021 as a solo indie developer and released a blog post on what had been going on in his life since the Great Yogg Ventures catastrophe of 2014. In the post he shared that he had gone through a depression after having to cancel Yogg Ventures which nearly made him quit game development though he didn't give up and continue to pursue indie dev. As of the publication of that post he had returned to DreamWorks Animation and was able to fund his own personal projects through working in the industry. As for the Yogg's cast, well they're not exactly the YouTube titans that they were back in the 2010s but with the changing 
times and evolving trends, I think that's pretty normal. Yogscast, Lewis, and Simon currently have over 7 million subscribers and continue to make gaming content. As far as I can tell, they've been fairly transparent about the situation. They've reiterated that Wintercool came to them wanting to create a game and that their role was basically to sign off on ideas and advertise it to their audience. They had little to do with the contracts, budgeting, or development of the game itself. According to them, the missing 150,000 that was handed back to them was spent sending physical rewards out to backers, though rumours and clickbait articles circulated online that the Yogs had pocketed the money. Obviously, there's no real proof of this, and these claims were likely just rumours. Still, Yog Ventures remained as a stain on their career, one of the most infamous Kickstarter disasters in history, and the game that shut an entire studio down. But there's still one question left to answer. Why did this all happen? So the half a million dollar question is what exactly went wrong with Yogg Ventures? It seemed like it had everything, big names attached, a team of industry professionals, and half a million dollars, so what caused the project to implode so dramatically? Well, in my humble opinion, it fell victim to the number one pitfall in indie game development. Thinking you can make an open world multiplayer sandbox RPG with complex mechanics and an expansive open world. Whenever I see these types of projects, I always just think back to the science-based 100% dragon MMO post on Reddit. It's so easy to think you can make something of such a huge scale, especially when you have such a talented team and so much money, but in comparison to what Wintercool wanted to make, half a million dollars was a really, really low amount. Take into consideration as well that a decent chunk of that money went towards Kickstarter fees and physical rewards. Wintercool probably only had like 400,000 to work with. And then also take into consideration that what they were originally asking for was half of what they got. Their original budget was only 250,000 to make an open world multiplayer MMO. Additionally, Wintercool Games hadn't actually produced a game before. I have no doubt that all of the artists and developers were super talented, but jumping into a big open world crafting sim as your very first first game as a studio together is ambitious to say the least. The lack of adequate funds and planning combined with the team's inexperience led to several huge problems that staggered development early on. They ended up losing $35,000 worth of funding to a contractual error and then having to scrap hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of game code because they didn't know what they were doing. All of this was compounded by the fact that this was a Yogscast project. While their stamp of approval drew in backers by the thousands and got the project funded, it also meant that hundreds of thousands of eyes were glued to the project, even the media was covering it. When the project failed, it wasn't just a Kickstarter fail, it was a certified famous YouTuber Kickstarter gaming industry scam drama TM all in capitals. And personally, I don't really think that Yogg Ventures is a scam like many people have claimed that it was. I don't think that Windcool or Yogg's cast set out with the intention to trick backers into funding a project that they were going to half-ass or they weren't planning on delivering. It's pretty clear, at least from what I've seen while researching this video, that everyone involved was really passionate and they did everything they possibly could before having to discontinue the game. They really wanted to put this thing out. But it was extremely poorly managed and at the end of the day, the backers who lost money, especially those who lost hundreds or even thousands of dollars, were right to be upset. It was a disaster that impacted pretty much everyone involved, from the backers who lost money, to the Yogg's cast whose reputation was smeared, to Wintercool who literally went out of business. Thankfully, all of this happened a long time ago and honestly, I just hope that everyone involved has been able to move on since then. The fail game remains as a cautionary tale and a warning to both backers and developers alike. Stay informed and always know what you're getting yourself into on Kickstarter. Also to the several people who backed the like $10,000 Yogg Ventures tears, I hope you are doing okay. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching, I really appreciate it, um, I hope that you enjoyed that video topic. Um, Kickstarter scandals and stuff have always intrigued me, it's always an interesting topic to cover. Yogg Ventures is a pretty, um, pretty famous example, um, but yeah, I've been uh, looking forward to covering this for a while, so I really hope that you guys enjoyed it. Um, if you have any suggestions for things that you want me to cover in the future, definitely let me know. And um, yeah, <laughs> thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it, and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye! Thank you so much to my Garfield Overlords over on Patreon. Katrina Likes 5e Stuff, Fitzy, Jorge K. Cruz, Michelle Olsen, Matt LRJ, SHSL Sunsun, Doug, Jordan Nielsen, Dana Homegardner, Charlie B, Simon, 
John Leach, Rin Pendragon, Pom, Dan Meadow, Xavier Araujo, Helm Hamburger Hand, Dazzo Blunt, Sheriff Whiskey, The Furby Librarian, Red Meth, Astrian Vortex, Jesse Chisholm, Sophie Skidder, Brianna Robinson, Grip Gunderson, Jane, Kimono My Gyro, Joe Bradshaw, and Arcantilis. Thank you guys so much for supporting me. As always, if you want to join these guys over on Patreon, the link will be in the description. And yeah, thank you for supporting me. I hope you enjoyed the video, and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye!